Oedipus Rex is a tragedy by Sophocles, an ancient Greek playwright born in Colonus and died in Athens. It's assumed to have been represented for the first time around 430 BC. The story takes place in Thebes, a town in Beotia, plugged by a plug. The people is crowded around this king, invoking his help. Oedipus, enlightened and benevolent sovereign loved by his subjects, claims to have already sent Creon, the, the queen's brother, to cast on the Delphic oracle on the cause of the epidemic. Oedipus is honored and revered because years before he saved the city of Thebes from the nightmare of a sphinx, a monster that devoured those who were unable to answer his question and for this reason he was acclaimed king, given that the previous king had died and to assess the throne he married his widow. Creon finally returns to the palace and gives the response to the oracles. The city is contaminated by the killing of Laius, the previous king of Thebes. The killer still lives in the city and nobody knows who he is. It is therefore necessary to find him and punish him in order to purify the city from his unclean presence. Only then can peace and prosperity return. Oedipus, a rational and just man, intent to have over details on the story he does not know completely. He comes from Corinth, he is the son of a king Polybo, he is actually a foreign, and therefore he needs to get information. Creon tells him that at the time of operation of the Sphinx, Laius was killed by bandits while he was on his way to Delphi to interrogate the oracle. Meanwhile, the old Thebans pray the gods to protect the city of Thebes. <laughs> then Oedipus decides to intervene decisively. The murderer of Laius will have to be identified and exiled. Severe penalties are threatened to anyone who protects or hides him. Moreover, to know the identity of a murderer, Oedipus summons Tiresias, the blind fortune teller. Tiresias appears before the king at his reticent. The king is angry with him and startled to ask why, if he knows the answer, it insists on not revealing it, putting his city in danger. Theresia say that sometimes it is wiser to be silent in order not to recall other misfortunes. The king doesn't accept this behavior and orders Theresia to speak and reveal the name of Laius killer. He is a magnanimous ruler and will not kill the guilty. He only intends to save the city by purifying it from his presence and will simply send him into Kessal. The old man does not want to obey and the king's anger increases. At that point, Theresia yells to the pressure of Oedipus and responds by accusing the king of being the author of a martyr. The sovereign at first remains appalled by the answer. Then he is indignant, suspecting that Creon, the Isidorus of the throne, has concocted with Theresias an evil plan to defame him and force him to abdicate. Theresias sighed, and as he moves away the prophecies that by the end of the same day the culprit will be found out and blind and exiled, he will leave tapes and go away begging in a foreign land. The Thebans are astounded by the words of Theresias. 
First they imagine the guilty one on the run, hunted by the men and the goats. But then they consider the enormity of what is claimed by Theresia. They decide that this prophecy is unlikely and that not even the great fortune teller is infallible. No one gives credit to his words. Meanwhile, when Creon learns that his king suspects him of treason, he meets him, calmly assuring him that he, he has not interest in his throne. But Oedipus does not believe in and is increasingly hungry. At that point intervenes Jocasta, widow of Laius and now wife of Oedipus, to put peace between the two men. Jocasta speaks with her husband and with sweetness and love invites him not to give listening neither to oracle nor to soothsayers. In fact, she says that years ago a prophecy had been made that never came true. She had been foretold to his first husband, Laius, who would have been killed by his son. Instead, Laius, as is known, was killed by bandits while he was on the road to Delphi, where three roads meet. Oedipus, instead of clearing up, hearing this statement by Jocasta, remains deeply disturbed. The queen, surprised by his erection, Ask her husband why he is upset. Then Oedipus tells of having renounced the throne of Corinth, of which he was the crown prince as the son of King Polybo, because one day the oracle of Delphi predicted why he would kill his father and marry his mother. Shocked by the prophecy, Oedipus has decided to move away from the city and his family to avoid it coming true and on the road between Delphi and Thebes, where three roads joined together, had quarreled with a man and killed him. What if that man was Laius? Then he decided to convene the witness of a murder that had taken place years before. Meanwhile, the Thebans were very upset by Jocasta's disbelief in relation to the oracles. Beware of claim to violate the eternal laws of the gods, not recognizing the divine power and acting in a super way. The punishment will not be long in coming. On the same day, a messenger for Corinth arrives to inform Oedipus that King Polybo is dead. Oedipus is sad for the loss, but at the same time, a weight rises from his heart. Then it's true but not all the oracles are available. His father is dead, but not by his hand. But the part of a prophecy concerning his mother Peribea remains, so Oedipus asks for news of her. The messenger wants the king already so tried be reassured. Then he tells him that there is no danger that he called, according to the prophecy, generated children with his mother, because Peribea, the queen, and Polybo, the deceased king, are not his real parents. The rulers of Corinth had adopted him when he was still an infant. He knows for sure. He used to be a shepherd on Mount Citerone, and it was he who received newborn Oedipus from a servant of the house of Laius and brought him to Corinth. At this point, Jocasta has now understood all the horrible truth. He begs Oedipus not to go on with a research, but she is not here. Laius' servant arrives at the court. The shepherd tries to dissuade Oedipus from continuing to question him, but the king wants to know the truth. The servant then, forced by the vehemence of the king's questions, confirms that he had received years before the order to kill his newborn son, since it had been prophesied that the child would kill his father. He had disobeyed out of pity, and instead of murdering him, he had handed him over to a pastor who had taken him to Corinth. Finally, the horrendous and unspeakable truth is clear. Oedipus, not knowing he was Laius' son, 
killed him years ago at the crossroads, and ignoring that Jocasta was his mother, married her, generating four children with her. At height of horror, Oedipus returns to his palace shouting, Light, let me see for the last time. The present Theban Sinus pardoned Oedipus, who in an holy day discovered himself an involuntary author of inexpressible acts. The compassion and horror together that the Thebans feel for him is so unbearable that they wish they, they had never known him. A messenger appears announcing that Jocasta unged herself and that Oedipus blinded himself with the buckle of her dress. At that moment, Oedipus appears, groping, blind and desperate, his face covered with his own blood, which claims to have torn his eyes with the tip of his mother's brooch jocasta, because nothing now to him who is cursed can no longer be sweet to see. In the face of Oedipus' desperation, urges him to trust Apollo. Dramatic is the encounter with his two daughters, his men and Antigone, still children. Oedipus embraces them as they are his sisters within daughters. They will live marginalized, without hope of marriage, paying for a fault not theirs. At that point, desperate, blind, bleeding, torn and beggar, he leaves the city, obeying his own edict of exile, a man hated by the gods. In just one day, Oedipus passes from the splendor of a just and happy life to the blind darkness of an impure and redemptive horror. Oedipus pays for a sin that does not belong to him, but that fell like a curse on him. In fact, the myth tells that many years before his father Laius, a guest of Pelops, fell in love with his son Chrysippus, who was still almost a child. He kidnapped him and took him with him to Thebes. The Theban reaction, the very young Chrysippus fell victim to the irrepressible desire of his captor and took his own life in shame. The father, Pelops, upset by the pain, cursed Elias, wishing him never to have children or, if dead, to be killed by one he had generated. When the son of Laius and Jocasta was born, his father, for fear of Pelops' curse, tore him from the, his mother's arms and tied him ankles together with a strap, exposed him, leaving him on the Mount Citerone. The shepherd who saved him gave him the name of Oedipus, which means swollen foot. The Oedipus Rex is a symbol of the fragility of human life, which can pass in a short time from the maximus of splendor to the most abysmal of abuses. Sophocles' tragedy is based to the inexorability of fate regardless of an individual responsibility. It tells the society of guilt, very different from what will come later with Christianity, the society of sin. For sin, always personal, there is the possibility of redemption. For the blame, never. A fall, cannot be redeemed. You suffer it, you are contaminated by it, destroyed, even when it's not yours. Oedipus is a symbol of human intelligence driven towards the truth, but is also a symbol for the ancient Greeks of hubris, but is the arrogance of those who don't accept their own limits. In wanting to investigate too far, Oedipus ends up being devastated by the discovery of a reality so terrible as to be unacceptable. 
faced with a trough, Oedipus chooses to blame himself, an allegory of having been so blamed that he did not notice the unclean action he had committed, the parricide and incest with his mother, as well as the procreation of Creatus, of which Jocasta was also mother and grandmother, and he father and brother. When he had his eyes, Oedipus could only see an illusory reality. Tiresias, in antithesis, is the one who, of our blind, can see the trough, a symbol of discernment but also of respect for divinity. Pelops' curse does not end with Oedipus. Even his four sons, Ismene, Antigone, Theocle and Polynice, are respected from a destiny of blood and pain. Ordinary people without serious faults, landed and destroyed by uncommon fate, by an adverse fate. Here, also according to Aristotle, the essence of a tragedy. <laughs>